there's two changes. We can no longer communicate commission offerings through the MLS, so we have to do it another way. Mm -hmm. That's all. We just have to do it another way. The other is, is that every single agent is going to have to have a buyer broker agreement signed with that buyer before we can show them a single house. Real estate. And now your host, Steve Martin Smith. All right, now water. practice rounds over. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Tony Moore, here we are again. Hello. My goodness, I love doing this with you. All right, thank I, you. I don't know how many of my uh, my co-host videos you've seen. I haven't done that many because it is it's rather time consuming and. You know, taking my gear out to somebody else's location and whatnot. You know, it's a little bit of a pain. But I think the value for the consumer is there, and it, it makes it all worth it. And, and right now, you know, with what's going on with the, the NARS lawsuit and all the misinformation out mm -hmm. there, I feel it's really important that they hear from us. I agree. Okay. So, you know, the, the way that I'm hearing things out there in the news uh, I know are not true. What What are some things that you've been hearing that that you either know are not true or uh, you know you're like not sure what the realtors are actually having to do because you're not a realtor. I'm not. I'm not. And I and honestly, I'll just I would have to say that right now on the outside looking in because I still am on the outside because I'm not a realtor is that there's a lot of confusion. That that's what I see is that that just people are confused about what's going to happen. And uh, you've been helping shed some light on that. And I'm glad we're putting this together because I want to hear more from you on what's going on, when we're going to see results, and uh, what a professional's take is on what's happening. Yeah. Well, and, and it's great for me being part of REMAX. REMAX isn't known for having rookies. We're known for having the, the top-tier professionals, right? Like yourself. Like myself. Thank you very much. Nice plug. I appreciate that. So we actually had a conference call today with the CEO for Remax. She did a great job of breaking down what's going on right now. And, and the one thing that I'm going to look you in the eyes, Mr. and Mrs. Viewer, it is a proposed settlement. It's not even etched in stone yet. So to assume that what you're hearing in the news is actually going to happen would be a mistake. There's just a lot of misinformation out there. And the biggest one that concerns me is the one that is causing buyers to feel like they're not going to be able to afford representation mm. on the next time they buy a house. What I've heard, tell me if you've heard the same, is there are people out there saying that going forward, Sellers are paying for their realtor's commission, and buyers are going to have to pay for theirs. Is that what you've heard? Uh, that's what people are thinking. That's the misconception, I think. Yeah. yeah. It, oh, it's 100% the misconception. So if the proposal actually goes into place, the biggest change that has anything to do with commission is that it will no longer be able to be recorded or marketed through the MLS. So whatever the commission amount is, it will be between agents. Now, we will probably come up with some other way to notify all of the realtors of what a buyer or what a seller is offering mm -hmm. for the buyer's commission. And we will explain why, uh, why sellers are still going to want to do that. Okay, It's going to be in everybody's best interest for that to still occur. We can hit, that, hit on that in, in a couple of minutes. But the, uh, the idea that the commission structure is is being mandated to change is a fallacy. Mm. Not happening, okay? Uh, we can market it in, in any way that we can come up with. It's just not going to be a feature in the MLS. And you know what kind of cracks me up about that? It was, I don't know, a year or two years ago that all of the sudden it was so important that everybody knew what commission was being offered to a buyer's agent that it was mandated that it got put through to like Zillow and Realtor.com. Like right now, if you go on Zillow, I think there's a field that shows what the commission amount mm. is being offered to a buyer's agent. So it was just in a like very recent past that they made that change. And now all of a sudden it's going to, now nobody can know. Come on, it's man. It's a secret. It's a, se it's a big secret now. You know, it's supposed to be full disclosure. Right? I mean, we're not hiding anything. I'm not ashamed that this is what I charge to help a seller or a buyer with a real estate purchase. Or 
this is what you're paying as a seller to get an agent to find a buyer to buy your house at the best value. Right. Right. You're, you're not allowed to advertise that anymore. Well, on MLS. On the MLS. That's just, just right. It doesn't make much sense why it's that, but I can understand why a lot of consumers have a misconception that it's not that it's not just not being advertised, but it's going away or or something of that nature. Yeah. Well, if it's not advertised, it's not there. <laughs> right? So so just you know, no buyers. If you have to like end early, you don't get to finish this uh, th this whole video understand that you still have the right to be represented. You should be represented. It's not something that it's in your best interest to do by yourself because it's like a 13, 14 page contract with addendums that you're signing and becoming liable for. I don't do my own taxes. I know I have to pay them, right? Yeah. But I don't know the tax laws. And I have to trust somebody with that. And you have to know the best way to put them together so you don't get out of it. Mm -hmm. so that you pay the right amount of taxes and that you, you know what you're doing. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's what a realtor does for a buyer and a seller Yeah, to represent, you know, Steve, one of the things is that when I sold my last home, the, the realtor asked me if I wanted to do lower commission. And I said, no, I did the max because I wanted to, I wanted my house to be advertised so that more people would want to sell it. To, so I could have more buyers so I can get maximum value at the sale. Right. Right? Isn't that what it's about? Yeah. It's, it's about it's, getting maximum value and bringing the most amount of buyers that you can to your house right. and not the least. And I could see if somebody advertised the house with zero commissions to the realtor. They have no realtors bringing anybody. Who's going to come to your house? Right. Nobody. Mm -hmm. You know, the seller's paying the commission one way or another. They're either not making the money or they're making it and then they're paying it. You know, that's a, that's a great point that you brought up. We want to, of course, always get the maximum value for the sale of our house. Mm -hmm. But I pulled up these numbers and we spoke about them. And this is my, my corporate office. We're, we're a company that's powered by, we're Gulf State Mortgage Service, powered by the mortgage firm. And the mortgage firm is through the whole state of Florida. And they helped 4,876 families last year purchase homes. So I asked him, I said, can you pull up numbers for me and do two numbers? Do one that anybody in those, those 4,876 that bought a house with 5% down or less, who probably don't have a lot of money, who maybe got gifts or whatever in order to make this purchase, and then 5% or down or more. And the 5% the down or less was 40% of the families that we helped last year. We're five percent down or less. Could you imagine as a seller all of a sudden losing forty percent of your buyer pool, and sitting there thinking that you're not going to have to reduce your price? It's supply and demand. When the demand goes down because people can't buy, your value is going to go and, down. And those forty percent of people, the reason why you're losing them is because they don't have the commission to pay. Right. 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 It's just like when you bought the house. When this seller who bought the house, who's thinking. I'm now not going to pay commission for the next buyer mm -hmm. had the commission paid for them. Right. Already. They sure did. And the value of the house is there because it was part of the commission, just like the house next to him and the house next to him and the house next to him. So this has been a, th how, I mean, how long has this been going on? Well, I've, I'm in my 10th year of real estate. Before that, I bought and sold my own houses. Mm -hmm. I've always paid commission for a buyer's agent. Uh, absolutely. There's no set fee from the National Association of Realtors. You want to pay for what you get. And, and you might be able to find a discount broker, realtor, whatever you want to call them out there that's going to do reduced cost. Right. But you're not getting the same level of service. Yes. And if you're going to pay full commissions, you want to make sure that you're working with somebody who's giving you those. Right. Who is a professional, who has been doing, who knows what they're doing, who has experience. And as you mentioned too, you were talking about it before, is that when you're finding a realtor, when you find a mortgage person, when you find a plumber, when you find somebody, you want to go out and look at the reviews and make sure that you're getting experience and somebody who's going to actually be on your side. Yeah. You want to make sure as a buyer or a seller that you're represented properly by the right people. Yeah. And if you're not going to pay for it, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it.
But there have been people who have paid for it and didn't get it. So that's actually, I think, more where I was trying to go without even realizing it, is that, you know, I've seen some of the comments out there as people are talking about how much realtors make, is that why should somebody who's been licensed mm. for a week make the same amount of money as somebody who's been doing this for 10 years and, you know, is in the top 2% of all the agents in the area? So... I don't think they should. I think we should have apprentice programs. I think there should be ways to get there's, – there's changes that need to be made in the industry, but changing the way commissions are paid is not it. Yeah. You know, and that's something that you, you, you brought up before, and it's something that actually when you asked me the question earlier about what is my understanding of what's happening. And, and another thing that comes up with it is that commissions are negotiable. Yes, they are. But they've always been negotiable. Always been negotiable. So nothing with the lawsuit part is changed. changing the way that your commissions are put together. No. All that's changed is that we can't market it through the MLS. Yeah. So, But I think a lot of people, a lot of the consumers out there, a lot of buyers out there or sellers are thinking that, hey, this has changed. I can make more money on my house. I can not have to pay the, the the buyer's commission, right? Right, which I think that's not true because first of all, the commissions have been negotiable mm -hmm. always, as you said. Yep. And second, you want to pay those commissions to attract the buyers, right? Who forty percent of them, yeah, might not have the money, or or will even buy your house or even look at your house if you didn't do it. Yeah, and now that's forty percent of for the mortgage. Our corporate, corporate office. office. Yeah, okay, your the, corporate my, office. Yep. So the numbers that I have written down here, this is specifically for Sarasota County. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, from the $500,000 to $800,000 price point in Sarasota County in the last 90 days, 45% mm -hmm. of those were mortgages. 45%. Mm. Now, I don't know how many of the, those were like they put 20% down. Some people get a mortgage and put 50% down, yep. right? So I don't know how many that that affected, but I can tell you that the under 500 crowd, under 500,000, 58% of those were mortgages. Mm. And like right now, I know, I know, because I just looked it up, there's over 500 listings in Sarasota County at 350 or below. So 500 listings, and that's, that's, that's only 350 or below, not 500. Right, that's 350 or below. So that's 58% of those, which is uh, 200. Yeah. And then 40% of those were 5% or less down yeah. of the... 200 listings so now you're looking at 80 mm -hmm. so you're losing 80 buyers yeah out of 200 yeah i know when you're dealing with the under 500 that's where we get a lot of the you know three percent five percent conventionals the three and a half percent fhas that 100 percent usdas the vas is there any opportunity according to the rules of va for them to even have representation unless it's free because what I have understood is that one mm. of the rules with VA is that the buyer can't pay commission mm. just like there's some other things that the buyer can't pay do you do you have any understanding of that so I don't and you hit me on the spot with that okay. but I'm not a hundred percent sure okay because it's never happened it's never it's never right, happened. it's never happened I've never had a why would you need to know that no so I think that that might have been one of the things that came up in the in the Remax call today. Mm -hmm. I've had information coming from so many different places, right? Maybe. We've had other conversations. Yep. I don't know what we've already said in this video or before. Well, and this is we're only four days in, and we're only four days in. There's uh, so of, of much everything with this lawsuit. So much information. But so, you, but you know, I would like to bring up is that. that you spoke about earlier how we helped a client who never could have done this oh, right. and bought. Uh -huh. I, I call them Jack and Diane. Jack and Diane. Yeah, just because I don't want to use the real names and, you know, I don't know, John Cougar, Mellon Camp, you know, Jack and Diane. So this particular couple, uh, and they were in their 40s, and they had moved down from uh, someplace in the north. And when they moved down, all they could afford was a $35,000 mobile home in one of the communities here. Why? Because he's 100% disabled. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she works full time. She's a hardworking gal and he does what he can with some kind of side business that he can do from home, whatnot. But he can't go out and work a full time job and, and have, you know, any type of career anymore. So they buy this home and they think they're stuck there. And I got to know them a little bit. And, and you know, as I started hearing about their situation, because I'm 
they told me they lived in a mobile home. And I'm like, well, would you, would you like to live in a single family home? It's like, yeah, I just don't see how it could ever work. We're not able to save enough money. This is our situation. And I'm like, well, I have successfully gotten people into a single family home with like less than $2,000 out of pocket. They didn't believe me. <laughs> I, I don't blame them, right? Uh, my very first podcast ever in 2020 was with a couple, not this couple, but with a couple that I did that with. Oh. All right. And, and so this, this wasn't a one-off, this kind of thing can happen. And so as we started working with them, uh, oh, and she actually worked for another financial institution and tried to get a mortgage from there and they couldn't help her with this, but together we did. We did. And so we get them into this house in the summer of 2021, single family home cost them less than $2,000 out of pocket. They had to pay for their inspections. They had to pay for their appraisal. They had to pay for their survey. Everything else, it was 100% financing. And the uh, closing costs were rolled in to the, the mortgage, paid credited back by the seller. Concessions. Concessions. Yeah. And the seller covered the commission. So, you know, that's how they got into this. But then Ian hit in September and tore the top completely off of their mobile home. And she went over there like a couple of days after Ian hit and saw that and sat there and cried because mm. that was almost them. They rode out the storm in their concrete block single family home and they didn't have any place to evacuate. So, I mean, they might have ended up in there when the roof was pulled off. And if the seller wasn't covering the commissions. They never would have been able to buy This never would have happened. Right. This never would have happened. That's what we're talking about with this 40% of people. Yeah. All these people that want to buy a home, that need to buy a home. And Steve, I told you many times, the number one reason why people don't buy houses is because they don't have the cash or think they have enough cash in order to do it. Right. There's down payment assistance programs. There's all kinds of things to help them. And I mentioned this to you before too, is that these house prices that are how they get appraised are based with the commissions in them. Right. I mean, I bought my first house in 1987. Yeah. And, and I know that I had to pay the buyer's agent's commission when I sold my house. We sold. And the people that you bought your first house from paid for you to buy. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's how this has successfully worked all these years. That helps make it possible for the um, part of the American dream that is home ownership. You know, how, how does somebody ever get to the point where they can retire and not have a house payment or a rent payment if they can't buy a house to begin with somewhere earlier in their life. And build wealth. And build wealth. You know, I, I look at it, and uh, we talk about this all the time, but I, I look at it, and I, I, you know, we're sitting here, I'm looking out the window, I see all these houses in front of me, mm -hmm. and I look at these houses, and I say, hey, got house one, house two, and house three sitting here. House one is offering to pay commission for a realtor to find a buyer, to bring them to the house, to make the best offer they can. House two, same thing. And then house three is not offering to pay commission to a realtor to bring a buyer in. Well, the realtor is going to bring the buyers to house one and two yeah. and not three. And house three is probably going to end up selling, but it's going to sell for less value right. than one and two. Because they're paying a commission. When I sell a house and I pay the commission, I'm saying, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Realtors, find me the buyer who's going to give me the best deal to buy my house. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, and, and think about this, too. So you sell your house. You willingly, intelligently offer to pay the commission for the buyer's representation. Yep. And then you're out looking for a house. Are you going to be in any mood... To have to pay for your own representation as a buyer when you just covered that for the person who bought your house. No, you're not. No. So why would you even want to make an offer on that house? Or if you do, it's going to be low. We don't want buyers to go out there and represent themselves. Yeah. And get themselves in trouble. Yeah. They don't know how to read the contract. They don't know inspection periods. They don't know negotiations. Right. The last thing that you'd want to do as a buyer yourself, I think, is to go out to write a contract or have the seller write a contract because there are people out there who will take advantage of people. 
Right. So let's talk about the protecting the public thing. Mm. Okay. So in 2014, when I went through real estate school, the first two days, it seemed like they were really drilling into our heads. The reason why we have all of these rules in the code of ethics and the laws that we have is because there was a time not so long ago, 60s, 70s, getting into the 80s still, where a lot of people's lives were destroyed by... Mm non-ethical people helping them do real estate. Mm. Okay, we'd yep. call them shysters, right? And when you have a screwed up real estate deal, I mean, it's, chances are that's one of your biggest or your biggest investment, like you're all in on, the, on these things. That can just ruin your life in, in unrecoverable ways. And so they put all mm-hmm. this stuff in a place to protect the public. We don't want to change that now. If you go into this without... A professional, a, I would say a seasoned professional who really knows what they're doing and can can help protect you from the bad things that can go on as you're signing this 14-page contract that you have no idea what it really means. And, and you know, I didn't know what they meant either. Mm. I had good realtors throughout my, my life, and I had to trust them like I trust my tax accountant or my business attorney, right? There's stuff I don't know about these very important areas of life that I have to trust other people. When I'm getting a mortgage, I call you, right? Because you know the stuff better than I do. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to go in and buy a house, do not believe for a second that you can't have representation because of what you're hearing in the news. Don't believe it. And don't feel like, well, I can't afford it, or I don't want to pay it. I mean, I would say if you can, if you know you can afford it, but you don't want to pay it and you choose not to pay it, well, I mean, that's on you, right? But as far as my job to protect the public, I'm making sure that everybody that listens to my podcast or read my blogs knows, call me. I will help you figure this out so that you don't have to do it by yourself. Hmm. That would be the, the biggest travesty in all this is to see people, you know, trying to buy $350,000, $400,000 houses. Uh, with, with like they're all in everything they got and then end up losing it. Mm-hmm. You know, I had somebody just last year, two years ago that I represented uh, as a, a buyer's agent and they bought a, a condo and the sellers did not disclose everything the way they should have. There was no way for me to know either. And they went in and bought it. They didn't do a mold inspection because there was no, need for that in their opinion after they get in they discovered there was a mold problem because mom was very allergic Mm. to mold because i was their agent they came back to me and said what can we do about this and i helped guide them through the process and get with a really good attorney and i gave them you know the right counsel from a real estate standpoint but the attorney counseled them from the you know legal standpoints for that and they ended up suing the seller and winning a pretty good sum of money to help resolve things if they had done that without representation, they would have been all on their own through that. And that's all included in what you do. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just a transaction that you, you take care of. Oh, I didn't make any more money you, after the fact. Right. <laughs> you, you, know? you help them. Right. And you know, this is the, this is the, 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 probably the last part of the lawsuit that, that I always think about or hear people talking about. And one thing they say is that they, they say, well, that's because realtors make too much, which I think that, it's, it's a misconception that people have because it's, it's not all your commission, right? Yeah. Where's no, it go? No, no, it's not all our commission. So, you know, I, I'm a numbers guy. Uh, I'll, I'll put a movie in at, you know, 10 o'clock at night, grab a cocktail and sit there on my computer and start looking stuff up, right? Because just I want to know facts. You know, I don't, I don't like uh, assuming things, right? Mm-hmm. So I happen to know that from the beginning of 2020 through the end of 2023, there were $97 billion worth of residential real estate sales done by just the agents of the Venice Board and the Sarasota Manatee Board. So that's 9,900 agents did $97 billion in sales. You know what that averages out to? $75,000 a year per agent, hmm. 75000 a year. And that money goes to the brokerage, not to the agent. And then the agent gets whatever commission split that they get. And then they have to pay all of their own taxes, 
right? Because there is, I mean, there's no health insurance or, you know, social security tax or anything being paid by the brokerage. And then they've got to pay for what? All of their marketing. My marketing, total marketing to draw attention to our team, but then also marketing all of our properties works out to about 25% of my income. Oh, so you market the properties. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You don't just put it on the MLS and it magically gets sold. No. Oh, okay. No. You might find somebody who's doing like two, three, four sales a year, and they're not doing enough to get good at their job. We close over three sales per month as an average. Puts me in the top 2% of all the realtors in town. And that means that somebody in the top 2% is doing a lot of deals. So I'm not saying I'm the only good one out there. I'm not saying I'm the only skilled one out there. And I wish that there was an apprentice program so that you know you could take somebody who, who just got their license and they could start learning from a pro. But I've tried that twice, and both times they got visions of grandeur in their head because uh, I wasn't giving them the full amount of their commission. I was doing most of the work while I was training them. Both times within a year. Those people wanted to go out on their own. Neither one of them are doing real estate today. Hmm. You know, so I don't know how to train, train people to do what I do because they don't want to stick around long enough to learn it. So you just really have to be careful who you are trusting this stuff with. Well, I think like the bottom line of what you're talking about here is, is, is in any profession, in anything that we do, we need to go out to Google and, and, and thank God for the internet. Yeah, I know. We can go out. We can look at reviews. Yeah. We can read the reviews. We can see how many reviews people have. We can go and make sure that who you're working with is a good realtor, yeah. a good mortgage person, right? Right. A good, uh, you know, a good plumber, a good whoever you're using. But to go out and actually research and make sure that they're worth the commissions mm -hmm. that they're getting – because they're doing the job for you. Yeah. And I think this is where the whole lawsuit actually came in, is somebody went to somebody who didn't do that for them, right. who didn't give them what they were supposed to get as representation. Yeah. And I think that's where it all came about, but there's plenty of good realtors out there. There's plenty of good people out there. Yeah. Just take your time, do your research, and if you don't want to, just call me and Steve. Yeah, well, and know this too. We've been talking about the commission thing. There's, uh, there's two changes that if this proposed settlement goes through, are going to happen. One is that we can no longer communicate commission offerings through the MLS, so we have to do it another way. Mm -hmm. That's all. We just have to do it another way. The other is, is that every single agent is going to have to have a buyer-broker agreement signed with that buyer before we can show them a single house. Which should pretty much probably have happened already, right? Yeah, should have. I mean, yeah. I, I use buyer-broker agreements all the time. Yeah. But... The, the question in this that we're still, this came up in the, uh, the Remax uh, webinar today, is that, well, what do you do about open houses? Because those people are going to come in. Are they each going to have to sign an agreement before they come in and you show them the open house? So we don't know how mm. this is going to affect that yet. So there's still some things that we don't know, but you can still have representation. The sellers can still pay it as they always have to make the whole system work like the, the fine-tuned machine that it is currently, we don't want to change that. Back on the Google reviews, every time I refer Tony Moore and Golfside Mortgage, I say, look them up on Google. They've got, just on Google, at least 255 star reviews, but I think you've got thousands like in all, with all of your resources. Almost 2,500 total. Okay. That, yeah. you can, that you can find online. That you can find online, right? So if you are not doing your own research, which is so simple, I mean, that's on you. <laughs> you know, um, I'm telling you what to do. I'll even show you if you ask me, right? The, the main point is, is call us. Don't assume that you can't buy a house. And don't get wrapped up in the media. Yeah. Don't listen to everything the media says. So funny, a quick story. Okay. A couple years ago in 2020, they had a, a reprimand out that you couldn't foreclose on people and kick them out of their house during COVID. The fault once that fell off and you could foreclose, the media posted foreclosures up 124%. Well, foreclosures were up 124% because they went 
12 months without being able to foreclose. Right. So the media always takes things. They twist things. I think the bottom line is, as Steve mentioned, is that the world's not going to end. Mm-mm-mm. Things are probably going to stay close to the same. Yeah. Is where they are now. Yeah, I expect them to. And if you think that things are going to change drastically, you're, you're probably going to be, or if you're, somebody's going to let you think that or, or you're going to be represented that way, you're probably going to be misrepresented. Yeah. By the, by the wrong people. Yeah, let level heads prevail, mm-hmm. okay? This can't happen the way the media is saying that it's going to happen. It, it just physically can't. People won't sell their houses, and when people want to sell their house, they're going to do what they have to do to sell it. Mm-hmm. And if, paying, if having the price higher and paying the commission works as opposed to lowering the price and not paying the commission... Right. People are going to keep the price up and pay the commission. And, and there's going to be plenty of people like me that says, I'm going to pay commission because I want mine to sell. Right. You know, so the ones that say they don't, they're not going to, yeah. their houses are probably going to sell in the market longer. They'll probably end up dropping the prices. Mm-hmm. They'll probably end up going back and saying, hey, you know what? I think I will pay the commission. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if new construction already isn't giving you a hard enough time as far as competition goes, they're going to keep paying the buyer's agent's commission. There's, they know they want us, who we have the buyers, to bring the buyers to them. Well, it's the same thing with builders, right? Don't they increase the sale price in order to pay the commissions? Of course. It's all part of it. And they control the sale price of everything in their neighborhood. So they can do whatever they want. As does every neighborhood because they all pay commission. Mm-hmm. Unless you... You know, you have a, a, a family sale or yeah, something of that nature. Yeah, occasionally that happens, but appraisers take mm-hmm. that under consideration. Right. All right, so I, I think that we've covered this thing to the nth degree. Uh, we, we've got the main points out there for now. You know, uh, I'll be continuing to, to blog and do shorts on this, and maybe I'll be able to get back over here again uh, after we get more information. But it will probably be a couple months before we really see how things are playing out with this. And that's supposed to be July, you said? Yeah, well, July is what Ish. they're saying. Yeah, Somewhere July-ish is, is when uh, we're no longer going to be able to put the commission in the MLS. And at that same time is when they're supposed to be implementing the everybody must sign a buyer broker agreement. But, I mean, I'm, I'm not working with anybody that doesn't sign one anyway because I don't want to get sued. The buyer broker agreement says this is what I'm doing for you and this is what you're doing you know, in, in response to what I'm doing for you. Mm-hmm. Right? If we don't have that in writing, then... You know, that, that's that's how bad things happen. So it's your quote or your 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 invoice, basically. Yeah, more or so less. Everybody has something like that yeah, anyway. Everybody has something mm-hmm. like that. I mean, I you know, I, I know when I got worked in my house, whether it's flooring or windows or a roof or whatever, I've got to sign something from somebody. Saying, this is what it's costing. Before to... they're going to start doing work on my house. Nice. You know, so. It makes sense. It's the same thing. All right, Tony, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. you. I I learned a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. And, you know, subscribe to the Real Estate Agent Man podcast. Uh, If you are on Apple or Spotify or anything like that, we're on all of them. Uh, Subscribing to the YouTube channel, Real Estate Agent Man YouTube channel. I make it really easy. Real Estate Agent Man. That's all you got to remember. And until next time. You want to own a place like the ones you've seen. Maybe near the beach or a golf course green. Searching on the web and housing magazines. It's time you call Steve Martin Homes to reach your dreams. We sell Sarasota homes. We sell Sarasota homes. Sarasota area homes. You've just viewed a sample of beautiful homes that we've helped homeowners sell and purchase across the greater Sarasota County area. Sellers enjoy our value added and customizable listing packages, while our buyers just love getting their offers accepted. Everyone needs a realtor they can trust, so what are you waiting for? Call Steve Martin at 941-894-9800 and visit stevemartinhomes.com.